Like many, I've been watching the heroic protests at Standing Rock against the Dakota Access Pipeline. To explain more about this story, I'm sitting down with Dennis Banks, who spent decades as a leader in the Native movement. Dennis is from Leech Lake Indian Reservation in Minnesota. In 1968, he and his colleagues founded the American Indian Movement, known as AIM. He's led countless actions for Native rights, including the takeover and occupation of Alcatraz Island. And we'll get to that in a second, but first, Dennis, you've been off and on for about 10 weeks at Standing Rock, um, integrated with the community there. Paint the picture for us. Describe the scene for those that haven't seen the videos or been there themselves. Uh, it felt good for me to be there, but it felt better because of what I was seeing. And I've seen gatherings over the years, but this was a gathering that had, oh, it, it, was going, it was, had a different purpose. They were bringing their tribal flags. Uh, during the first uh, two or three weeks, I, I saw the uh, one one flag go up. I, I sensed a, a, a much stronger nation, a much stronger nationhood uh, forming. And that this is what I, I, I felt was was beautiful. I have not seen this kind of gathering. Uh, and bring it in support. I have never seen it in my entire life. Wounded knee was one kind of action, uh, but it, it, it was nothing in terms of, of, of people coming together. And every weekend I'd, I'd, I'd come back and then I'd see five more flags, 10 more flags, 20 more flags, 100 flags, and the, the, the community building. And, and I would say within the sixth or seventh week, it was no longer an encampment. It was a community. Because now we had, we had about 4,000 people there. Mm -hmm. uh, but it reached a, a peak by, uh, by uh, Labor Day weekend of 10,000 people. Just seeing all of this develop, it, it made me feel that we needed we needed Standing Rock, and the American Indian Movement needed it. Why didn't this happen mm -hmm. years ago? Why, why didn't we as Native people band together before like this? But it seems to me that need was needed U.S.-wide. This is incredible. It's such a fascinating evolution, how it's grown and so many people are coming to support it. I mean, I think now there's up to 300 indigenous tribes represented there, Dennis. Yes. You know, what do you think really caused this kind of unprecedented mobilization? You yourself are saying that in your lifetime you haven't seen something like this. Right. I think that's why, that's why, it, that's why it did come about. Mm. It's really, a, this, is the, this is a true, true feeling of what has been lost mm. with, with a lot of us. Mm -hmm. uh, Standing Rock Sioux Tribe, they also, Dave says, Dennis, we didn't know what was going on. We took the stand against the, the Dakota Access Pipeline. We didn't know what was gonna happen out there. Unprecedented support came in that, that other tribes uh, now realize that that we can, we can be victorious on this one if we stick together and you know hold together. Let's talk about the pipeline in general. Uh, what land is it being built on? You said the Sioux Nation. Talk about the land, the environmental destruction, and what effect it would have on the communities if it does go through. Well, uh, the the pipeline. Well, there's several pipelines, but probably about 30, 40 pipelines that are going underneath all across the United States. And even on our reservation, the Chippewa Reservation in northern Minnesota, one came through ours with very little resistance. We don't, my mm. family went out there and was trying to say, no, you don't, can't go any further than this, but you know, please show up. But the pipeline, and digging up stuff, uh, and when, uh, and our Shambo and them did a, a great deal of research on, on their property, and then there are, there's, the Environmental Protection Agency has listed five, five species endangered uh, 
There's the, the two whooping, uh, whooping crane and another crane called the least turn, T-E-R-N, and then the black-footed ferret, uh, the, the pallid sturgeon, and also the gray wolf. These are all endangered species, but also this land where they're, they were mm -hmm. coming to is a burial site. And that is why the Standing Rock Sioux tribe said, no. Uh, now, the, the, the Corps of Engineers called the uh, Standing, Standing Rock Sioux tribe and talked to Dave. They talked, he said, he remembers they talked for about 15 minutes. And then when, it, when the news starts coming out, the, the Corps of Engineers says, well, we consulted with the tribe. And, and that's when Dave Arsambo and the, and the tribal council says, uh-oh, wait a while. 15 minutes on the phone is not consultation and, and gi giving permits to these people to come through that property. We have burial grounds there. There's animals there. There's this, you know, all these species, endangered species. We're going to stop it right now. And so they, 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 they filed their lawsuit against the, uh, against the um, not only the, the Corps of Engineers for issuing those permits to these people, uh, but also to the state of, state of North Dakota for allowing them to. They, nobody consulted with the, with, the, with the tribe about digging and digging, going through bear grounds. And, and then the, another aspect of the pipeline going underneath the Missouri River. Mm -hmm. And some of it won't go all the way underneath, but we've seen them going through the underneath the river, at the, laying on the, on the bottom of the, uh, of the bed there, uh, the riverbed. That, of course, the, 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 the history of safety and the leaks and the disruptions with the, with the Dakota uh, Access Pipeline is terrible. They, you know, and they said, we have a good record of safety. No, it's not, <laughs> it's not. It's contaminated the soil back there, contaminated the water back there, and it's contaminating the air. Now you're bringing it here. And we're saying no. And our Shambo and him went out there, went right out to the site, said, no, you're gonna stop right here. He got arrested. Tribal council members also standing with him, they got arrested. The, the tribe is, uh, I mean, the Dakota Access Pipeline is, is on the terribly wrong side of history on this one. It just, it's bad. I mean, they, they're stand, they say, we stand behind our, our record of safety, and, but they, they can't. It, and if, that, if any of that leakage goes into the Missouri River, it's gonna destroy not only the river itself, in that area, but all downstream. Mm -hmm. And it'll be catastrophic danger happening. So, so that, you know, we, we are, the tribal nations in this country understand from time, when time first began, that, that we had the responsibility of being a caretaker. And that responsibility is very great and huge, and it never ends. And we assume that, I've been hearing that since I was a kid about, you know, you gotta take care of the land, you gotta take care of the land, take care of the water, you gotta take care of the air, and you gotta take care of the soil. Such an important set of values that's been so lost Absolutely. on so many people in this country, Dennis. And it's quite astounding that the oil companies can say that they have this perfect safety record. Oh. Considering that in the last two weeks, there's been multiple spills that have been completely covered up by the media. I wonder why, let alone this whole protest is covered up. We've seen these photos of these dogs, these attack dogs uh, on some outlets, Democracy Now!, etc. The story behind this is actually quite crazy. <laughs> um, tell us what predicated these attack dogs, these corporate mercenaries from unleashing them on protesters and the burial grounds that you've been speaking of. How did that fit into this particular story? We have a walk every day, as I mentioned, all the way up to the site. And a lot of, a lot of grandmas and moms make that walk. And one particular day, we saw the, the, the bulldozers scraping, and they, they were not supposed to be doing that. Not, and, uh, and the grandmas and the moms decided to cross over the, the territory onto their land. Yes, they were trespassing at that point, 
But they went over there, and they were going to stop the scraping. And they got really close, and they told them, they told these guys, that we we're going to stop you. You're not going to, you're not going to dig up our graves. You're not going to tamper with any of that, you know, that sacredness of, of our people buried there. And then all of a sudden, the dogs came out. You know, they were trying to hold them like that, and then they were singing the dogs loose. They, they, they didn't set them loose, but they, they were on a long leash, mm -hmm. and they're letting them out, to, and they were attacking the women. And then, of course, the warriors just came forward and started, started there, there was a lot of pushing and shoving and um, it was it was horrendous to to see these dogs you know you, you picture sights of uh, of 1953 and 1954 when bull connors mm. had all those had all those dogs you know and they're they're singing them on on the the, the walkers from selma mm -hmm. um that oh man, it it was terrible, and but the the women even after getting bit there like that, and they one of them had to go to the well, they all went to the hospital. The ones that all got bit up, but they stood there. They just stood there. They weren't going to move, even after being bitten. And then of course the, then you see signs too. I mean pictures of the dog turning on each other, and, and it was it was bad. It was bad for for to see. Women and children being being bit. That that's the sadness of, of what. But the but the pipeline struggle goes on. I mean, mm -hmm. we 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 will continue to, to battle them in court, uh, even though they've done wrong things against us um, on the on the field. Uh, we're not moving, and it. Um, I thought after the dogs, they were going to bring the guns. Mm. And I'm sure that the security would, their security would want to use weapons. They brought them. And when you bring the weapons to a fight, then you're, you're, you, you want to use them. Yeah. That's provocation right there. Uh, who are these corporate mercenaries? What, what forces are behind this pipeline? Well, there's there's uh, there's about five companies, including Philips, including Shell, uh, who are waiting for some of that oil to be refined. And then they're 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 investors. Um, so they're the ones that uh, that are propelling the pipeline mm. because they it's a quite a, I don't know how many hundred billions or, or billion. Thirty-five billion dollars invested on this already, and so corporate money talks. But in the case of Standing Rock, uh, nobody is listening to what corporate America wants. We're, we're listening to the history of, of of our people that are buried there. We're listening to the animals that are being hurt. Well, I have a feeling that this is why we're not hearing about this issue, because it's about the corporate class and, and this protection of private property um, that supersedes the land, supersedes the rights of indigenous people, Dennis, and we've seen this story play out time and again over history. Back to the burial ground, uh, someone was telling me that the, that the site that they were bulldozing was actually not even in the path of the pipeline, and they were just doing it to kind of provoke you guys even we, more. Uh, that's what we felt right away, because there was no, from where they're at, the, the pipeline coming this way, and I think they deliberately took their machinery over here to to do it and provoke uh, an incident. Uh, well, of course it did provoke. These, these, the people that were on, they went out of their way to come scrape over here and dig. I think that they were kind of laying the lance down. They were laying the you know, the, they wanted to fight. Mm -hmm. What's interesting about this uh, particular situation is that dozens of people there have been arrested for vandalizing construction equipment and trespassing. However, the people that desecrated these sacred burial grounds are not getting charged with, <laughs> you know, violating these protected archaeological sites. Why is that? I think the, the state of, 
uh, North Dakota, they, they, they've also had a bad history of protecting the sites of Native Americans all across North Dakota. And I, I don't want to say each, each governor's been you know, racist, but there, there's a lot of racism that are still exists in, in, in North Dakota and South Dakota. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's part of the reason is that they, a lot of money is going to be, as long as that pipeline is flowing through North Dakota, they're going to be making money. And all of this is in violation of long-standing, constitutionally protected treaties. There's Talk two treaties, that. yeah, that, that come into play. One is, is the 1851 treaty, uh, Fort Laramie Treaty, and the, and the other one is the 1868 treaty. Um, and so they both, uh, they both are, 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 both signatories of the of the U.S. government are on it, plus the chiefs, Red Cloud signatures on, on mm -hmm. them, and saying that, uh, that that our land will be never be disturbed. As a matter of fact, that was one of the uh, statements that the that the in the early in making the the, the, the U.S. government uh, the lands and the properties of Native people will never be be disturbed. It seems like where reservations were picked to be located are kind of just one giant sacrifice zone where there's really no ability. It seems like they're all very desolate, some out in the middle of the desert, some out in the middle of you know North Dakota, South Dakota, with um, not very much ability to have self-sustenance as a community, um, almost designed to keep these people on the pockets of society, marginalized as much as possible, so then they can be used and exploited time and again. I think the, uh, the history of the of, of putting us on land that what they thought was no value to the land, and uh, and suddenly you know in many places there's there's natural resources. Uh, the in, in our territory, it's it's the timber, huge resources, huge amount of land for, and the, in our reservation, which was 60 miles by 40 miles deep. Um, the state of Minnesota and the U.S. government uh, working together, they took half of our reservation and declared, and declared it uh, as uh, uh, the Chippewa National Forest. At first it was called Minnesota National Forest, but there was, there was a, they wanted to change it, so they changed it to Chippewa National Forest as if we, Chippewas, had some, mm. this was part of our national forest, but it's not. Find, find the riches, find the resources, and you'll find change of, change of, 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 the, of the policy between the government and the native people. Change the, change the understanding, change the, the, the target. And so every place is filled with uh, gold, you find gold, on the reservations, find oil it's on the reservations. Change, change the language of the treaties. Change, change the treaties. Make a new treaty, and that's what they did. Operated, they wanted to destroy our identity, and they put us on these boarding schools. I'm one of them that they put in these boarding schools. You know, destroy, kill the, kill the Indian, save the man, um, and. Over a hundred thousand children were taken from their homes and pulled, and, and a lot in our family. And I'm fighting. Where am I going? Where am I going? You know, and my mom and my grandma are right there, and I'm trying to hold. You know, trying to hold on to them, and they come and take us apart. And, uh, but that 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 scene was multiply that by a hundred thousand children. They were taken by force from, from their um, mothers and from their grandmas and grandparents. Um, that that destroy the language, mm -hmm. destroy the songs. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, you couldn't sing any native song. You couldn't speak any native language. The vernacular would be English and English only. That's how they wrote it up. 
in and, the boarding schools? Yeah. And and there was corporal punishment there. And but there was also I mean I was in a school where there was priests and nuns. And the first that was the first one and I I heard the screams. And I was part of the screams. And the running away and the beatings and the whippings by belts and leather and um and raping. I heard I heard those screams. It just and it, I I hear it today. I I I said I would never forgive this government for allowing a policy like that to to be inflicted upon us. Um, and so historical trauma is still with us. And that's but that's when Standing Rock happened. The, all of this, this trauma and saying, hey, we, let's, we're going to go. We're going to, we got to go support them at all costs. For people who don't understand how devastating the Wounded Knee Massacre was, over 150 Lakota people were slaughtered um, at Wounded Knee, 1890, not too long ago, Dennis. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, you hear the mainstream media kind of picking up on points whenever there's a horrific mass shooting, like at the Pulse nightclub, and they say this is the biggest mass shooting, oh, the biggest massacre yep. in the history of America. Why is it that whether it be white mobs killing, you know, black people, where there's 150 people killed as well in the early 1900s, why is it that the slaughter of, of both black and native people are omitted and continue to be omitted from the historical record? <clears throat> because I don't, I don't think they want us to 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 be part of the, the of the of the meanness of, of the United States. <clears throat> That's what it is. They're very mean. You know, History has been, they, they've been mean to us, and they, they've hurt us. Uh, and I don't think they want that shown forever. But as long as I'm alive, I'm gonna sh I'm gonna say this is what happened in 1890. This is what happened in 1864 at Sand Creek Massacre. And time and time again, there's been pain and hurt. You know, Dennis, all of this is happening from Pine Ridge to the Navajo Nation to the Dakota Pipeline. All of this is happening within the context of a complete extermination and genocide of Native peoples in this country that I feel like needs to be brought up and, and understood when these struggles are happening today. What can we do? What can people do that are watching help um, the Native peoples, help the Dakota pipeline struggle? Meet me at Standing Rock. I say that to everybody listening. Mm -hmm.